Studies as well as president of a Palestinian Human Rights Club at the University of Ottawa. So I'm here as part of the organizers to bring awareness to the ongoing occupation of Palestine. And I'm here as a volunteer with the groups here to try and emancipate all of this anger, the rage, all of it into something that is actually productive. So when we're coming here, we're not just out in droves to speak of how children are not numbers or how we have this pain. We want to make that into actionable demands. And we know that Canada has done some work to go the distance, but you know, it's the infinity and beyond here. They need to do a lot more than just <laughs> say that they're going to support with this much money because they're just dealing with a symptom. They're not dealing with the base of the issue, which is supporting an apartheid, apartheid colonial Zionist state that's enforcing all of these atrocities and making it seem like children are just numbers and trying to put all this down under the umbrella of anti-Semitism. We are not here to be against anything but oppression and apartheid. And that is why I'm here today. I'm out here fighting for my people, uh, trying to get the justice of the Weezer, fighting for our human rights, uh, just trying to do everything that we can to get our voices heard um, to the city, to the country, to our uh, government officials, uh, to our MPs, uh, to everybody, because we want a difference to be made. This is our third time out here. This is our third time protesting. This is our third time having a demonstration. And we're not going to stop until we see a change. We're not going to stop until we have had a difference made. Uh, the Palestinian uh, issue brings me out here. The injustice that's going on in Palestine that's uh, being carried out by the uh, Zionist government of uh, Israel, the occupying force of Israel. So um, we want to shed light on the issue and uh, just make people aware of the situation. 90% um, of my family reside in Palestine. My uncles, my cousins, my aunts, my grandparents, uh, most of them still reside in Palestine. I've been to Palestine twice. I'm actually from Gaza itself and I've seen this firsthand. I've seen the brutality. I've seen how the people of Gaza suffer firsthand and I, um, I, I just can't bear feeling what, what they're feeling and I'm over here. I'm here and I'm living with a roof under my head. I have water, I have food, I have every necessity I have. But these people, they have absolutely nothing. 50% of them don't work. 95% of the water is undrinkable. So although that's half a world away, I will always be fighting uh, from Canada, from wherever I am. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. The Canadian government can um, uh, put pressure on uh, Israel uh, to uh, uh, go back to the two-state uh, solution um, and um, uh, stop arming Israel uh, because we know that the weapons that Canada provides to Israel end up killing children, women, elderly men and women. Uh, so we'd like our government to uh, stop arming Israel, to put pressure on Israel, to respect the Palestinian uh, people, treat them as humans, and go back to the two-state solution soon. Canada has, has not done nearly enough. If anything, they have done more against Palestinians and Palestine than to aid them. So what we that's one of our demands today, or all of them, is 
for Canada to step in, to speak up, condemn the Israeli government, and to with show with action, not just with words, sanction Israel and the funding of arms to Israel. I would love to see all these Western countries uh, recognize Palestine as a state, recognize our difficulties, recognize the apartheid against Palestine, sorry, done by Israel against Palestine. I, I would love to see the occupation lifted. There's honestly so, I just want to see a free Palestine. Really no other way to put it. Like you said, the Canadian government has already tried to do something, but can it do more? Absolutely, absolutely. I do believe that they can do more. One of the things that they can do is to actually speak out like Ireland did and deny the apartheid state instead of just vilify the murdering of children. That stuff is very clear. Nobody needs to look anywhere between the lines to see the war crimes that are happening in Israel right now. To be condoned by Israel and to have that violence be supported by Canadian money to arm these militant groups against the children that are dying. I think there's a lot more that they can do there because that's a voice that they can speak out to and that's something that they can action towards with all the power that they have. It's governments that are complicit like Canada, uh, like the United States, like many of the European countries, the superpowers of our world who allow this con to continue and allow for um, genocide and occupation to persist despite being against every international law. Absolutely. Um, from my personal experience, I mean, just growing up as a child um, and being Palestinian, I was born and raised in Dubai and there was always a sense of invisibility. You're always hidden from even your own world, your own maps. Checking on Google, you can't tag your own state. For a long time, there wasn't even an emoji of a Palestinian flag. So a lot of the times with us Palestinians, we struggle with this identity. Now having us come into the forefront, it's honestly so liberating, but at the same time, it's something that should have happened a long, long time ago. So this is us just trying to make sure that we don't forget as much as everybody else doesn't forget at the same time. What's it like communicating back home right now? Is it hard? Well, in uh, Gaza, they actually only have four hours of electricity daily. So there's only certain times throughout the day that we are able to speak to them. Um, it just depends. Uh, we can talk to them at least once a day, but it varies. And sometimes we'll be in the middle of a conversation and the phone will just cut off because there goes the electricity. What's happening right now is that you're having voices from my family and like family of friends around the world that I've met and kind of dispersed because ultimately, um, it's funny, but a lot of the people that I met in Dubai, because of all the alienation that even exists there, they all end up moving across the world to study in Britain, study in Canada, study in the States, and that's what we're all trying to do. We're trying to hopefully make it to the top with our identity to try and make some change or do some change, and that's why we're spread apart, because honestly, my sister is 12 years old, and I can't imagine having been living in Gaza, because half of them, 30% well, of children don't even make it past five there, right? That's a statistically proven fact. So that's the thing, it's the pain and privilege that you wake up every day to, spitting at your hands and trying to melt that privilege off your skin so that you can feel what your people feel for. And that's what everywhere around the world Palestinians are standing for. And I feel like that's what kind of gives us that unity. I don't have my family here. I don't know any of my family here, but we are all like a family standing together. So I very much appreciate how we're spread apart and we're trying to unify our voice all together. It's beautiful. Is it important for you to come out today and have your voice heard and your presence felt? It was absolutely important for me to come out. Um, I'm glad to see a good turnout. Um, the more uh, people that come out, the more that we make other people aware of our, you know, of our cause of the Palestinian cause. It's so unjust what's happening in Palestine. Uh, Israel is an occupying force, so according to international laws, they have to respect the Palestinian homes, the Palestinian people, and their way of life. And that's not happening in Palestine.
rally. I think it was beautiful to see the turnout that happened. Um, the one thing I would ask everybody to do is that it doesn't stop here. One of the things that you can do after you take off your kufiya, after your voice is completely gone, like me for the next week, what you can do is you can go and sign petitions. You can go and look at the BDS list. And you can go, because BDS works, it worked in South Africa. And the media right now is trying to press our voices. So share the voices that you see, share the stories that you are seeing. Go to the BDS list and see what you can actually boycott to try and support all of the voices and all of this rage and emancipate it into action outside of these protests. Look into it, search any petitions that you can, email your MPs, look for those email templates, go to your Instagram, start a video, speak out to this, because this is one of the movements where we are leveraging everything that BLM started, we are leveraging everything that oppression has marked in the world to try and bring this to an action or demands that we can actually make fruit out of. So that's what I would ask people to do. It doesn't stop here. Open everything that you can, amplify the voices, apply to BDS, do everything that you can do from home. Oh, <laughs> oh,